Oh boy. This is not the video that I thought I would be shooting today. We touch, we break, make it seem that canted, that bent, and both of these bearings have a basically a developed axial play. You can hear them go click, click. So that's most likely the source of my noise. So, what happened? Well, as you can tell from the intro, I made a couple of attempts at fixing my car because guess what? I broke it. Uh, that is the price of going fast that nobody talks about. You will break your car at some point if you are trying to go fast and, uh, and win at the next HPDE or try and be the next autocross hero like I want to be. So. Uh, yeah, that's just gonna happen. It doesn't matter what part you use, abuse just happens. Um, so let's kind of have a recap real quick about what happened, why I was trying to fix the car, and what happened after I tried to fix it and where we're going. At the last autocross, the car developed a clunk. It sounded very similar to when the camber plates failed, or I thought they failed. I'm gonna eat crow on this one and just say that, yeah, camber plates didn't fail. It turned out to be something different. Um, so during the rainy run group at autocross when I was co-driving with Julian, I noticed a clunk started developing uh, occasionally. Um, so I didn't really think anything of it because it was occasional. It didn't really seem like it was going to matter. Uh, so we ran the car anyways and by the end of the day it was clunking pretty heavily over bumps. Um, I have spherical end links and my experience with those has always been they last about a season. Uh, rain, dirt, grime, they're just not meant to be on the road. So, okay, I went, you know what, the spherical's gotta be bad. I mean, it just seems the most likely suspect. I just replaced the camber plates. It's, it's not that, we know that. Um, so last weekend, I decided I'm gonna just take a look, you know, go through the car. Got the car in a garage, disassembled everything, and lo and behold, the end links were broken. Um, both end links did develop play, not a bunch, but they did develop some play, and uh, they were also bent. So right there I went, ah, that's it, perfect. Uh, well, while I'm here, I'm gonna put a sway bar in. Um, and I tried to put the sway bar in, and that didn't work because the end links were broken. I also seem to have misplaced the center section for the end link that I needed to make it work uh, with these coilovers, it's just, uh, dimensions are different between the two sway bars slightly, the way the arms are bent, so yeah, I decided, you know what, okay, I'll just put it back to stock, I'll just replace the heim joints, I'm not going to mess with this, eh, it's just, whatever. It was a day in the garage and it was fun and I went through the car and I needed to do that anyways. So, the other day I got those heim joints in, I didn't film anything because it's just unthreading something and threading it back in, so I went, ah, okay, I'll just do that real quick after work get it done, the car still made noise. I'll cut in what the car was doing as far as noise right here. And you can hear as I drive around, it goes clunk, 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 clunk. Now, I was pretty sure that at this point, it's still gotta be end link related. Maybe it's ball joints, I don't know. So I got a second set of ears with me uh, looking at the car and I recruited my pops and he noticed actually when jacking the car up, the car was making a thump or a pop and he had his hand on the wheel just so happened um, when he was looking down there and he could feel the pop through the wheel. Now you can see the strut, it's inverted, um, it's actually binding. That means something's happened to the strut. Now, what does that mean? I've only had these struts like nine months, why is it doing this? Let's go over that. An inverted monotube is a race car part, but it does come at a price. Uh, inverted monotubes on race cars are actually really well maintained. Um, you know, they're always cleaning them off uh, and everything. So. It's not usually an issue in the race car world, but you know, you take a car like the 86, it's being street driven, it's going to autocrosses where the lots are incredibly dirty. I've autocrossed it in the rain, I've driven it in the rain, I've used the car like a car is meant to be used. So um, dirt and grime gets just impacted in these struts. So 
two things have happened. Uh, well, it could be one of two things or it could be a combination. Um, the most likely is that I need to disassemble the struts and re-grease uh, the bearing in there because it just, uh, it just basically ran out of grease. And I, and I think that's pretty likely because I've seen a fair amount of grease built up on the um, actual uh, strut shaft itself and I've had to wipe that off. Um, so I'm guessing it's just, it needs grease. Um, the more uh, unfortunate possibility could be that they need to be rebuilt. Um, they've lost their nitrogen charge. Uh, I think that's really unlikely given just their age. I mean, they're only nine months old, probably 2,500 street miles. Uh, I don't drive a car that much on the road. Um, so I think that's what it will be. Um, so the next video will either be me uh, disassembling them or just shipping them out. I haven't decided what I want to do. I have pounded on them for a season and I'm kind of contemplating a uh, possibly a valving change. If I got to take them out and disassemble them, I would personally rather send them to a professional, have them do it, revalve, rebuild, and, and get them back on the car. I doubt the rear shocks need it. Uh, they just don't take as much um, load and stress as a strut does because in a McPherson strut car, your strut acts, it acts as your upper A arm. So there's a lot of load that goes on there. So we'll see what's next. Uh, so the car is going to be down for a little bit. Uh, the 86 is just going to need to get parked. I have a couple options. One, I could swap the stock suspension back in while it's out. I could also send the rear shocks out. Thought about doing that just because I'm going through this effort. It's going to need to be aligned again anyways, so maybe I just do that. Um, that's option number one. Option number two, I just swap the front struts uh, back to stock, park it, and we work on the Miata. That's probably the most likely thing. Um, there's an autocross in two weeks, so I won't be able to get the car ready for that, uh, or I won't be able to get the 86 ready for that. Uh, there's just no way. The time needed to ship the struts out and have them serviced and get them back in the car, it's not going to happen. So um, if I want to drive at that, that means it's time for the Miata. So if you want to see that, leave me a comment below. And uh, well, and if you have other opinions, also leave a comment. Just Tell me what you think I should do. Um, I'm open to suggestions. I'll also do a little bit of housekeeping here. Um, I'm changing the upload date to Thursday at about 12.30. It's a lot easier for me to film something on the weekend, have enough time to edit it, find music and do the whole thing uh, properly rather than try and just cram it all in and get the video up by Tuesday. Um, and the last video I did, it seems like it's done a lot better um, and a lot more people have watched it. So I think that's what's going to happen moving forward. Um, I have a couple more used bike reviews kind of in the works. You can look forward to a used Triumph Street, uh, not Street Triple, I'm sorry, a used Triumph Speed Triple review coming soon. Um, and I got a couple other surprises. We'll see how it all pans out. I don't want to say too much now. But if you have any questions, you know how to reach me. You can leave a comment below. You can hit me up on Instagram, whatever works. Till the next video, I'm Sean with A Driver's Perspective. <laughs>